You're watching Gab with Elisa. Hi, I'm Elisa Casas. We are going to profile a wonderful, wonderful woman here in just a moment, Jennifer Foxworthy. You know what? There's not really any coincidences in life. Sometimes there are events that come clear out of the blue and something happens and later on you look back and say, wow, that was amazing and meant to be. The woman that we're going to profile today on Gab with Elisa Profiles is a woman that I met through just one of those happenstances through another Facebook friend. I love social media, I love Facebook, I'm always on it. I met this wonderful woman, Jennifer Foxworthy, who has an incredible story of survival. And we're going to profile this woman and tell you an amazing story that started out with pain and anguish and has ended with victory and happiness. We're gonna do that in just a moment. So grab yourself a cup of tea, kick back on your couch, and get ready to join us as we profile Jennifer Foxworthy on Gab with Elisa. We'll be right back. Being your best is all about how you feel inside and out. If you feel good, you look good. Hi, I'm Dawn Campbell. Join me on Metricast Channel 10 for Be Your Best. I'll show you creative ways to dress for success, give you quick health and fitness tips, and daily ideas for living the life you were meant to live. Be Your Best airs weekdays exclusively on Metricast Channel 10 and is brought to you by Fitz Auto Mall. You're watching Gab with Elisa Profiles. I'm Elisa Casas, thanks for joining me. On this show, we profile people in our community that do amazing things. They may not be world famous, they may not be community famous, they may be, but they do wonderful things in our community to better the community. Today, we're going to profile Jennifer Foxworthy, who is one such woman in this community. I want you to take note of this beautiful smile right now. You see this? This is what you see when you get to meet Jennifer. And when you hear her story, you're gonna look back and you're gonna say, that's the face I see after this. So we'll get to the story in just a moment. But first I wanna talk a little bit about how we met and how we got to know each other. We have mutual Facebook friends and nice. I, I will, I will tell the truth, I am a Facebook addict. Hi, Me my too. name is Elisa. <laughs> and I stalk my friends' Facebook pages and I look mm -hmm. for interesting people mm -hmm. and get to know them. And we have a mutual friend who owns a business here in St. Mary's County mm -hmm. and she connected and said, hey Elisa, you would really like this woman. Hey Jen, you should talk to this woman. Yes. And so that's how we met. Yes. And over the course of getting to know you and your story, my, um, feelings for you as a friend and my admiration for you as being a strong, beautiful, wonderful woman have just grown so much. Oh, bless your heart. <laughs> you will not meet a nicer, more friendly human being. Let's uh, kind of back up just a teeny tiny bit. We'll mm -hmm. tell the whole story a little bit later, but um, you are a survivor of domestic abuse. Yes, ma'am. Okay. That's, that's where we're headed. We're going to talk about that. We're going to talk about domestic abuse and those things that surround it. But you are a survivor, survivor and a thriver. Yes. Um, as over the course of the next 30 minutes, we're gonna talk about. Before we get into the hard part of your story, let's kind of set the stage. Let's talk about you growing up. What was your childhood like? Let's talk about your career. Let's just go from there. My childhood, um, I grew up in York, Pennsylvania. I had loving parents, was surrounded by nurturing, um, cousins and grandparents and friends of the family. So I grew up at the time where everyone in the neighborhood was close. Okay. Where we shut down the street and we had block parties. Everyone knew everyone. I truly believe it takes a village to raise a child. Sure. So even the old nosy ladies that peered <laughs> out their windows wonder, you know, um, they ensured that I was safe as I went to and from school back to the house, that I got in safely if my parents were at work, if I, if, um, I was sick and my parents, they didn't want to miss any type of uh, their work. Sure. There were older ladies that watched me, mm -hmm. you know, um, kind of like babysat me. Nice. So, you know, as long as I was in by the time street lights came on, you know, that type of so it was carefree, you know, riding my bike, playing. Um, my parents, they had their issues. Um, they separated when I was younger and eventually divorced, but I still had the best of both worlds. Okay. I lived with my mother, but I could see my dad anytime I wanted. And I was active in sports. I went to uh, Catholic school, first to eighth grade. Mm -hmm. 
and then uh, I went to a public school for high school. I just wanted something different, a mm -hmm. different scenery. And I had above average grades. And by the time 10th grade rolled around, I knew that I wanted to go into the service. And I, oh. Yes, it, I, many people were like, wow, at such a young age, I knew by 10th grade I wanted to go into the service and that it was going to be the Navy. I had family members that were in the Navy and I couldn't afford, I didn't think I could afford going to college. Okay. I wasn't a, uh, a great athlete to win scholarships. And so this was, to me, a no-brainer. It, it provided that structure mm -hmm. that I needed so desperately. Um, and although my hometown is wonderful, it's that type of hometown where if you don't leave and venture out, it will swallow you up. Mm -hmm. And I knew I had the potential to do so many great things. And you did, because you did join the Navy out of high school. Let's yes. talk about your career, because you rocked it. You rocked your naval career. And you know, the funny thing, Alisa, is I knew I wanted to do at least 20 years. I, um, I was in a delayed entry program until I graduated. So when it came time for boot camp, I was all over it. <laughs> I was all over it. Um, I was excited about becoming independent and for once to be able to give back to my family. They sacrificed so much for me th for those 18 years. I no longer wanted to um, be that financial burden on them. Aww. I wanted to provide for them if I could. Okay. And so uh, September 23rd, 1991, joined the service, raised my right hand. And uh, my first tour was in ADAC, Alaska. And wow. so okay. my job was detecting, localizing, and tracking enemy ships and submarines. At wow. that time, the Cold War was winding down. Okay. You know, with Russia. Um, and you had Japanese uh, ships and submarines out there as well. And I loved that job. Due to certain um, circun circumstances, that they didn't need as many jobs in the Navy to uh, detect and track and localize enemy ships and submarines due to the Cold War ending. I had to come with another uh, job plan. Okay. And so th that's when I said, I'll go air crew. I'll do something similar, but flying in planes. Okay. I can swim, I can, whatever they throw at me, I can do. And so I went air crew. Uh, Naval Air Crew Candidate School in Pensacola, Florida in 1995 mm -hmm. and I found out quickly that the that there are people in the military that are not so uh, welcoming to um, women or African Americans or minorities I'll put it that way. Okay. Because um, African Americans, we are, have the stereotype that we can't, that we're not very good swimmers. Okay. And so many shy away from it. Okay. So I actually had a swim instructor tell me, well, because you're black, you're as a black woman, you're not able to perform the swimming techniques like your other classmates. And you did and said? I was, I was floored. Okay. I was floored. I was shocked. I'm like, are you serious? And I used his, his labeling, his stereotypes as my, my fuel. Okay. It motivated me. And I passed every swimming evolution, every obstacle course. I graduated with my head held high, walking straight, just looking at those people who doubted me. Saying, here I come. Exactly. And I found out that I was the first African American to graduate, uh, female to graduate air crew school in over five years, probably close to 10 years. That is amazing. And having said all that, let's fast forward to the end of your career because you retired not too long ago and yes. you retired from the Navy as? Uh, E7, a Chief Petty Officer of the Navy. Jen, your story is amazing and I, I don't know that we have 
24 hours because we could from the conversations you and I've had we could talk for 24 hours but I, I wanted to take this opportunity to really introduce you to this woman as you can see she had a wonderful loving family background mm -hmm. she was a woman who looked at obstacles as opportunities to um, beat everything that was thrown against her um, in the military with a phenomenal career decorated um, what have you really wanted to introduce um, Jen to you to our viewers because the next chapter in this Gab with Elisa profiles we're going to talk about the hard times mm -hmm. and the next really huge obstacle that you would face in your life and that is domestic abuse mm -hmm. now this is um, it's a hard story, but it is a story that bears telling because um, no woman, no person should go through some of the things that Jen went through. And so when we come back, we're going to look at that, look at some of that um, history, uh, the things that you went through, mm -hmm. and then we're going to look at the amazing, wonderful things that bring you to this smile and this face and this phenomenal story. So we'll do that in just a moment when we come back as we're talking to Jennifer Foxworthy on Gab with Elisa Profiles. I'm Elisa Costas. We'll be right back. Leonardtown, a most convenient place for shopping, dining, or even just wandering. Leonardtown, a most entertaining place for things to do, sights to see, and fun for everyone. Leonardtown, a most relaxing place for a quick visit, a lazy afternoon, or a long weekend. Watch Leonardtown, a most convenient place. A new program exclusively on Metrocast Channel 10. Brought to you by Dan Burris' Old Town Insurance. You're watching Gab with Elisa Profiles on Metrocast Channel 10 as we profile Jennifer Foxworthy. If you watched the first segment, you've gotten to meet this incredibly beautiful woman who has a very strong constitution and says, you said I can't? Oh, yes, I can. That's right. <laughs> and who does? Um, who's gone through the fires of hell and come out on the other side with a wonderful story to help other people. And this is the part where we talk about those fires and the things that were harder. Um, Jennifer, you had a great childhood. You mm -hmm. um, went to school. You had a loving, supportive family and neighborhood. Uh, you joined the military. You were in the Navy. And you were doing things that no other woman, uh, no other woman of color had done. Mm -hmm. And you were just thriving and surviving. Yes. And then, bam, you come to a place in your story. Um, let's, let's talk about it. You went through a, a, a five-year period of domestic abuse. Yes, Elisa. Um, leading up to, that, to me meeting my ex-boyfriend, I had low self-esteem. And people with low self-esteem, we can disguise it where we're like a clown when we're in public. We wear a smile. We mask how we're truly feeling inside. And we have great moments and things are going well in life, but with low self-esteem, which came from a series of bullying when I was younger, it shaped how I felt about myself. Mm -hmm. And in my book, when people read, they will see that many of the ladies actually all, has some form of low self-esteem. Whether they weren't nurtured um, emotion emotionally and mentally, maybe by their father okay. or by a male figure. And I tell people now it is so important for fathers to tell their daughters how beautiful they are inside and out. And it's not that my dad didn't, but Sometimes as adults we can become self-absorbed in our own world sure. and we not and we don't realize what our children may need okay. emotionally and mentally from us. So I found myself in poor, making poor decisions in relationships. When I met my ex-boyfriend, everything started out fine, you know. Um, the signs weren't completely there. He had a sarcastic attitude, but you know some things that when you have low self-esteem, you're willing to ignore. Okay. And your the outward attractiveness is more than the inner. Mm. Ouch. Okay. So I say a few months down the line, I thought I was pregnant and he physically, you know, he punched me in my stomach. Gosh. 
And that was the first, like, whoa, what just happened? Mm -hmm. And I was shocked, I was upset, threw him out. But then I went chasing after him because like so many other women, we want to know why. We're a question asking uh, gender. Mm -hmm. Why did you do this? We want answers. I took him back and I figured, you know, he's just, you know, broken from his ex-wife or something. And if I could love him more and just be everything that he needs and wants, then he'll display that back to me. We had some good times, I, I have to admit, but it really got bad uh, in the middle and towards the end with uh, financial debt because he liked going to the casinos, we both did, but he got carried away with his. Um, the name calling. And I tell people, those scars hurt deep. Mm -hmm. The physical, yes, you know, um, he put his hands on me, uh, slapped me, you know, the physical was there, mm -hmm. but it was more mental and emotional. But I stayed because again, I, f I had time invested mm -hmm. and I just wanted, I, I loved him and I wanted to see it through and he dangled the carrot of marriage always in front of me. And I wanted to, as I got older, felt like, you know, I, I need to have children. I want to be an honest woman. I'm living with this man. And that was the first mistake. You know, hindsight is 20, 20. Of course. You know, so it came to a period of where I'm studying for a chief's exam, uh, a chief's exam with the sunlight coming through the blinds because he turned off the lights on me. Um, he was always drinking alcohol and many other stories, alcohol or drugs were affiliated with the abuser. So let me, let me ask you this. You just mentioned you're studying for the chief's exam. So you're successful in your naval career. You're going to work every day. You're um, doing what you need to do and you're excelling at work and all of these things are going on at home. What was the um, deciding factor that you said this far and no further? Because obviously you sit here today, you have a book, which we're gonna talk about in a couple of moments that you wrote about your experiences and other experiences from women. What was the event or what happened within you and you said, no more? What happened was he had came from a deployment and his behavior had changed to where I suspected that he was cheating on me. And at the time, I really couldn't prove it, but the signs were there. You, uh, oh, I want to hang out with the fellas. And so I knew drinking would be involved. I drop him off at one place and no phone calls to say, hey, I've gone to a different location. So I'm up worrying all night. Is he in a car accident? What's going on? 12 o'clock rolls around at one o'clock. Finally, he shows up on the doorstep, drunk as a skunk, and I'm like, really, is this the respect? So by this time, I was at my sick and tired of being sick and tired point. Okay. And everyone, in order for any type of change, you have to get to that point. Mm -hmm. You have to get to the, I'm sick and tired of being sick and tired of the disrespect, the dangling of the carrot, of marriage, children, it wasn't fulfilling. Sure. I was already dealing with issues professionally because I was in an industry where it was male, not only male dominated, but Caucasian male dominated, fixing aircraft, being air crew, flying into planes. Mm -hmm. So professionally, I was the first in three different categories in my aviation career in three different squadrons. And it sounds like there was a moment the light bulb went off and said, I'm doing all of this and yet all of this is happening and no more. Yes. And 
I am ever so grateful that you got to that point and you decided to make some big changes. Yes. And not only that, but to share your story. And um, this is where we come to, where we have the wonderful part of your story because it's important to know the background. Um, a lot of times we meet people, we run into them and we get a snapshot of their lives and say, wow, you're beautiful, you're dressed nicely, you're clearly articulate, mm -hmm. you mm -hmm. must have had an awesome, amazing, easy life. Because <laughs> all you see is this minute of somebody's life. Yes. And when people get to know you and your story, they realize that yes, you are beautiful, yes, you are intelligent and articulate, but you have such uh, such a background that you also have this deep empathy and compassion for people and a desire and ability to help people, which is what I love about talking to people on this program. So when we come back, we're going to talk about the next beautiful chapter of your life. We're going to talk about a book that you've written along with other women who have been through abusive situations. We're going to talk about that and tomorrow my sunshine will come, yes. which I think is a fantastic title for thank a book. You. Thank you, thank you. All right, we're going to take a quick break, uh, grab yourself a snack, and come right back because when we talk to Jen, we're going to hear the happy part of this wonderful story. We'll do that in just a moment. Jennifer Foxworthy, our guest on Gab with Elisa Profiles. I'm Elisa Fossis. We'll be right back. Hi, this is James Laporte. Do you know what St. Mary's County is buzzing about? If you don't, then tune into Metricast Channel 10 to find out. The Buzz is a weekly entertainment program featuring artists, performers, and entertainers from the area. Find out where the hot spots for entertainment are this weekend. We've got the scoop on all the fun each week on The Buzz. The Buzz is brought to you on Metricast Channel 10 by Birch Propane. Efficient, environmentally friendly propane. Call for details, 301-373-2131. You're watching Gab with Elisa Profiles, and today we're profiling Jennifer Foxworthy, an incredible, wonderful woman who served our country in the Navy. By the way, I forgot to say thank you. Thank you for your service. Thank you. And thank you for doing it with such um, panache and dignity and strength, that because that's, that's what our country needs, people like you. So thank you for serving. She served in the military in our United States Navy, um, had a wonderful decorated career, um, and in the course of that career also went through uh, domestic abuse situations and has come out on the other side and you know what happens when you come out on the other side cue that smile <laughs> when you meet Jen anywhere this is pretty much what you see these days and I, I just I love I love hearing your story because I love seeing the end result um, coming through that domestic abuse you of course met other women and mm -hmm. have gotten together a support group of women and you wrote a book which is called tomorrow my sunshine will come and this is memoirs of women who survived domestic violence um, you went through it um, other women as well and you tell their story in this book yes. and I have to say I love the title of this book because I am all about um, there's an old song I think from the 40s and 50s you've got to accentuate the positive eliminate the negative mm -hmm. um, and, and I love that because you're talking about your story but rather than saying um, any of the myriad of things you could have said you mm -hmm. tomorrow my sunshine will come and that was kind of your philosophy with yes. life yes. Um, so let's talk about your book let's talk um, briefly about some of the other stories that are in here and just really use this opportunity to encourage anybody that might be out there watching if you're in a situation such as this please ask for help yes. um, we don't have time to delve deeply into it um, but I did ask Jennifer off camera if she ever got the question well, why did you stay? If you know if this is going on and you're such an intelligent woman, you have a career, why did you stay? Um, before we talk about your book, um, because this is important for people watching, really quickly, let's touch on that. When yes. people ask you, why did you stay, what do you say? I stayed because I was hoping my love and personality would change that person, that I was the person that could make them whole. Okay, and having stayed and having that thought process and having gone out, what do you say to women? You are valuable, that no one is worth uh, staying with if, you know, if they are mistreating you, uh, if your self-esteem is plummeting. It's all about you and how you feel about yourself. Put your hopes in in God because God sees you as beautiful. Not don't rely on man. And that was what I was missing. Mm -hmm. Had I realized how beautiful God 
saw me. Mm -hmm. And beauty is in the eye of the beholder. And the creator. Exactly. I probably wouldn't have had this situation, but then again, I was built for this. God trusted that I, that when he was standing beside me through it all, that I could get through this and then tell the story. So I have no regrets. Um, it, it was all for this purpose, to help other people. Because now what you're doing is you're picking up your sisters along the way and saying, yes. come with me because guess what? Tomorrow your sunshine will I come. I understand. You betcha. So let's talk about the book. Um, your stories in here and other women's stories as well. Yes, five other ladies. So when I re um, got out of my abusive relationship and started talking about it, the talking began the healing process. Um, that way it wasn't bottled up inside. I kept it inside for so long that I didn't tell my supervisors, I didn't tell close friends or family, um, out of fear, out of shame, um, guilt, just everything of, like you said, I have a rewarding career, I'm making my way through life, I'm independent, but I, I'm, I have this relationship that is so toxic and holding me back emotionally and mentally. Mm -hmm. I wanted to, once I found out that the statistics were one in four for women, I was like, it was an One in four women are abused? And it will be in an abusive relationship Gosh. in your lifetime. So I wanted to, as I spoke and shared my story of what I just came out of, other women were like, so have I. And that gave me strength strength in numbers and I kept a mental Rolodex of those women and once I retired I re reached out to them and said hey I'm writing this book are you willing to share your story are you willing to go there with me because you survived and they are thriving there's still some are going still going through their process of healing restoring and eventually forgiving but they're no longer in those toxic relationships. They're no longer in abusive relationships. So I thought I start out with my story and I take everyone uh, through the history of, you know, my childhood, my younger, you know, uh, 20s and into how I met my abuser and so on. And, and here you are today. Yes. And your book, it has my story in it, Jamika's story, Allison's, Felicia's, Pam's, Karen's. And it's funny because I, I pop open the book and it's dedicated to your mini me, Noah. Yes. So I think it is worth sharing and saying you're married to a spectacular man. Yes. You have a wonderful son. Yes. Um, you've got a book. You um, do speaking engagements. You do radio. You've done yes. all kinds of things. Women's conference. Yes. Women's conference. And you have... Um, all of these women that are linking onto you and saying, yes. can I come with you into the sunshine? Exactly. And it's to let people know that you can go through something traumatic, but don't let it hold you, hold right. you down, hold you back from reaching your full potential, your, your vision, your purpose. And that's how we live abundantly. Absolutely. Live the life that God desires us to live. And we all face issues. We do. And you know what? I, I don't remember what age it was that I was, but it was into my late 30s that I realized, you know, every single person you cross a path with has some kind of a story mm -hmm. that is rough. And it's mm -hmm. what you do to get from point A to point B. So, yes. Jennifer, thank you for joining us. Thank you for what you are doing for women. Thank you for your service in the military. And thank you for sharing a very personal story with us. Thank you. It is at my absolute pleasure. Great. I'm you can, and humbled. If you would like to be encouraged and inspired or if you know somebody that needs some help, make sure you reach out to them. You can pick up Jen's book. I know it's available on Amazon as well as a number of other places, so do that. Jennifer Foxworthy, a domestic abuse survivor and lifetime thriver. That's mm -hmm. going to do it for this episode of Gab with the Lisa Profiles. Thank you for joining us. We'll see you next time. <laughs>